Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us for this YouTube memorial service for John Bruce Dewar, fondly known by most of us as Jimmy. It's great to be able to take some time to formally pay our last respects to Jimmy. And even though we are all remote, we all share a common bond in that we were friends, acquaintances and family of Jimmy's. On behalf of Shirley, John, Michael, Bruce and Sandra, welcome to this memorial service. I knew Jimmy for less than two years before he died, and I certainly didn't know him as well as many others would have. But from what I knew of him, I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted us to lament his passing too much. Jimmy loved the Lord, and I have no doubt that he is in a better place right now. Still, his passing does leave a hole in many of our lives. And so we do remember him with a sense of loss. And so our prayers and thoughts go out to his immediate family and their partners and his grandchildren, Bianca, Alex, Nicole, Karen, Kevin and Maxine. My recollection of Jimmy from my first Sunday at Heronbridge Community Church is him being one of the first people at church on a Sunday morning with his coffee mug uh, ready. And as soon as the coffee was, was percolated and ready, he'd be there filling up his mug. And for the 20 months or so that I was there up until Jimmy's death, he was faithfully at every single pre-service prayer meeting with his mug of coffee. We all have different memories of Jimmy, and we're going to take time now to remember him as various people share their eulogies and memories of Jimmy. Hi, Dad. Well, what can I say? Mom and you delivered me into this world some 57 years ago, and from that day onwards, all you gave me was all you had. I remember growing up within a loving family and having a father that was always willing to help, assist, guide, and mentor. From the early hours of the morning after dropping us off on the side of the road at school to the late hours at night, you worked endlessly to give us everything we could have asked for. Later in your life and once the rest of the family took to joining the riding world, which as you know was not my preference, you took up sailing with me, making every effort at every turn to ensure we did our best. Even if on the odd occasion I'd dump you in the water, as happened often, this was a very special time to me, as it was always the two of us on board, and that was all we had. No one else was there to bail us out, should we have the need for it. Once again, you would rise to the occasion without a word of complaint and assist where possible. Over the years, we drifted apart, and, I, and as I think of this, it makes me wonder what I have missed. However, we still had our Christmases and birthdays, and then, of course, came Alex. So without you, no me, no Alex, and she is the greatest gift in my life. This little lady, as you know, was on her way back from London to see you. However, time did not allow that, and all she asked of me was to tell you how much she loves and misses you and that she knows you are in a special place away from the world we find ourselves in today. I quote from a message she sent to you. Grandpa, you always had this air about yourself. No matter when or where I saw you, you always made me smile. You were really a quiet person and we never spent much time together, which makes it hard for me me now. I don't remember much of when I was a child, but I always knew that you, my grandpa, made me feel so loved. I'm still lost and don't really know how to explain what you meant to me and what you will continue to mean to me. In the last few years, I had the great fortune of working with, with you, Dad. These were fun times, especially when you did not have your hearing aids. We would argue, debate, argue over many things and eventually you would get your way. I know it's your time now to have the life that you gave us so willingly. Being a man of faith, I am sure that you are now at peace and finding time for yourself. I'm not saying we had a perfect life and everything is always easy. 
But I'm going to say that it will be a lot more difficult to live without you and your methodical way of resolving life's ways. To a very special person, father and friend, I say goodbye. And until we meet again in that place you always promised and told us about, you will be madly missed and forever in our memories. Love from John, Linda and Alex. At this point, the family would like to thank all of Dad's families and friends for their kind words and support over the past few weeks. These messages have only endorsed what a great, gentle, kind man he was. Here is a letter written to Jimmy from his son, Mike. Hi, Dad. There are two quotes I would like to refer to in my goodbye to you today. The first one being, be careful, you won't know how much you'll miss a person until they are gone. Well, that's certainly true about you, Dad. I miss you so much. But at the same time, I look back on what you gave me and our family. I've never met a man that gave his entire life to his family like you did. Every effort in your work and play was for the better of us. We went to the best schools got the best horses, stayed on a great farm, went on the best family holidays, wanted for nothing. Yet Dad still drove an old bucky to work every day while his partners drove fancy mercs. I know that the pressure you put yourself under took you down that lonely road to that terrible disease that led you to losing your job, and with it the ability to care for us in the way we were used to. This never sat well with you. Yet you still put everything into the family's passion of horses and found massive support in your church. Towards the end of last year, I could see you were struggling. And on hearing the outcome of your tests, I knew you did not have long. And yes, I should have spent more time with you towards the end. But the time I did and the time you spent with Corin and myself at the end, I will never forget. Corin and I got to see what a fighter you were. Never complaining. Always a smile and a thumbs up in the mornings. Then the daily question, what day is it? Remember, I got to make it to 2 April. It's your mom and my 60th wedding anniversary. Karen thanks you from the bottom of her heart for the gift of sobriety you gave her, to which she will be very thankful to you. The second quote I would like to refer to is, can a person be happy and sad at the same time? I've always wondered about this. Well, Dad, you gave me the true answer. I'm so happy you are in a safe place like heaven right now. Looking down on this crazy world we are in right now, and I'm so sad because I miss you every day so much. Both my daughters, Karen and Maxine, send their love and thank you for being part of their lives. Thanks, Dad, for the life you gave us. I'll see you one day, but not too soon. All my love, Mike. This is a tribute to Jimmy Dewar from Bill and Catherine Thompson. We would like to pay tribute to our dear brother-in-law, Jimmy Dewar. Immediately after Shirley and Jimmy were married, they went overseas to England for a year or two. A few years later, I, Bill, studied geology at Wits University, where I met Jimmy Dewar's younger sister-in-law, Catherine, who had the bluest eyes, which were a striking and riveting feature of the Freshers' Activity Week. Soon after Catherine and I got engaged, I made a career change and decided to move from what was then Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, to South Africa. Jimmy was instrumental in assisting me to settle by helping me to find a position to work at BRC Weld Mesh. He assisted me in my studies and in due course I qualified as a graduate of the Institute of Secretaries and Directors. We remember Shirley and Jimmy being enthusiastic participants in all the family gatherings and celebrations, from making Catherine's wedding dress and organising Bill's bachelor party. At the bachelor party, Bill was pushed into the old Jehanian swimming pool and I think Jimmy was pulled in with him. Jimmy was the much-loved godfather of our older daughter, Frances. Jimmy was a great dad and participated keenly in all their children's upbringing and activities, ending up being a great course builder for the enthusiastic horse jumping that his family participated in for many years. Jimmy also loved all the family's large collection of pets, especially the Jack Russells. Their, do their dogs always had free reign of their large property and Jimmy, together with the rest of the family, was willing and happy to adopt our last little dog, Russell, when we left South Africa for Australia. 
On the occasion of us dropping off Russell at their house, when they had adopted a number of dogs, Russell stood up on his hind legs and paraded in this fashion among everybody and the other dogs. Russell lived happily in the Dewar household for the next few years. We will always remember Jimmy giving us a really warm welcome to their home whenever we visited them. Our thoughts are with you today, Shirley, John, Michael, Bruce and Sandy, and the rest of your families. God's blessing on you all, with love from Bill and Catherine. Here is a message from Richard, Julia, Naomi and Oliver. Dear Auntie Shirley, John, Mike, Bruce and Sandy, I am so sorry to hear of Uncle Jimmy's sudden passing away. I shall always remember him as a gentle, generous uncle with a wry, dry Scottish sense of humour. It's a pity that I didn't spend more time with him and you to better get to know him and you as an adult. Some of my most nurtured memories as a child were of idyllic summer days swimming in your pool, riding Dumpy and Quiver, stroking Okinawa, Interlock and et al. admiringly, following Robert's gentle guiding instruction or feeding them, me as a novice stable hand. Millie, Andrew and Jennifer were some of my favourites, but Alex was the best. Indeed, we have our own Oliver, a handsome party colour fawn on white whippet. He lives up to the high standard of hound that Alex left on my impressionable young mind. Jacob and you rustled up some fabulous feasts and excellent birthday parties with lashings of full fat Coca-Cola, like Bruce's under the syringa tree with his femur in traction. What underpinned this all was a most generous love between you and Uncle Jimmy, with that being palpable to, his, to this nephew. My impression was that he did all he could to allow his family to do what would make them happy. Two Yamaha RD350s. <clears throat> I guess the demands of his self-set duty made his crutch. Gunston Plain. A difficult habit to kick until later. I'm sorry that this caught up with him later. I'm delighted to have re-met Alex, at least by cell phone, as an adult in July. We talked for at least a wonderful hour, not least about what a great guy Grandpa Jimmy is. Uncle Jimmy will have a special place in my heart and childhood memories and a gentleman role model like Barty. He and you all are in my thoughts and prayers. Love, Richard, Julia, Naomi and Oliver. Van Amover and um, part of Hembridge Community Church right from inception. I can't really remember when Jimmy and the Dewar family joined us at Hembridge Community Church. Um, but one thing that everybody can attest to is that uh, Jimmy would arrive early um, and get his cup of coffee, test it out, and he'd go off and join the prayer meeting. He was always faithful, um, a quiet man, um, but yet if you, if, you, if you were able to engage him, um, yeah, it was good to chat to Jimmy and an uh, old school person around yeah, just being 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 honest, being upright, doing what is right. Um and I was impressed by just yeah, his faithfulness to the Lord Jesus and a, and a quiet faith about him. 
I remember the early years with Upward Sport, he'd come and deliver some goods to us that the guys had produced, and uh, it's either the, the clothing or the caps. And um, yeah, even on, a, on more than one occasion, Jimmy would arrange through his company some donations for Rising as Hunger and, and for HDRC and so on. Um, but I, I, I would enjoy every now and again chatting to him after church. Um, he was always found in, in the same place, and you knew where he was, um, and he was, he was just always there. Um, and even even of late, um, visiting him in hospital um, in the earlier stages, um, chatting to him, and just he was quite uh, pragmatic about where he was, what was going on with his life, um, and and yet very clear about his faith, very clear about his, his love for the Lord Jesus, and and his security of his salvation, and his assurance of his salvation. And even though the last time I, I visited with him in hospital, um, a couple of hours before he passed, and um, chatting him again, and, and just saying to him, you know, that, that, that the Bible speaks of people falling asleep in Christ, um, and that would be what he'd experience. And in a twinkling of an eye, he'd he'd be awake and and be with his Lord. Um, and he, he said to me, I, I know. Um, as he kept talking um, on two occasions, he just raised his thumb. Um, and yeah, I just some of my, my abiding memory of 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 Jimmy um, as a as a faithful man. Um, I remember a couple of a couple of a couple of weeks ago, months ago, um, he would retired um, from from work at eighty, and uh, he said to me that he's got he's so busy doing nothing, <laughs> and uh, so I approached him to to help us with our finances um, with the city, so the school and also the the Henry Training Research Centre. And, and and you could just see that old school professionalism, um, honesty, integrity coming through in the way he worked. Um, so so wanting to do what is right and make it sure that it was correct. Um, so yeah, books have, have never been better. And uh, we really miss Jimmy. Um, that faithfulness, that, uh, that that deep faith, that real faith. Um, and so to the family, my my heart goes out to you all. And and I just trust that that all of us and 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 the family in particular will too know that deep faith and that deep love for the Lord Jesus and the assurance of that salvation. And so I bless you and 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 wish you well. Um, amen. good to me. His word, my hope. Jimmy was a very special member of the prayer group and um, a uh, servant of the Lord, always de dedicated <clears throat> and always um, had a heart for others. And um, he just loved the Lord's Prayer. And that would be my message. I'm sure you will be saying the Lord's Prayer um, on behalf of Jimmy. But yeah, just love and um, prayers to the family at this difficult time but to know that he is where we all want to be uh with jesus and um, that's one certainty we all have um obviously what we're not in control of is um how long we are here for and we just have to take it day by day and we just pray for um for love and uh, peace and uh, courage encouragement for those left behind and um yeah, 
it's a tough place to be, but we know he's in the best place. So God bless. And lots of love from Julie and Chris. Hi there. I've just listened to Chris's voice note and, um, you know, I just echo everything that's been said from mine, from me knowing Jimmy, it was just his faithfulness, um, just his uh, dedication, just his friendliness and uh, stalwart of the faith. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be I just also for Jimmy, just I um, I know him as a friend. I know him as a Sunday after Sunday having coffee with him, and just discussing the things of life. And um, yeah, just greeting him. Um, he used to sit behind us in the church, and um, it was always nice knowing when we prayed, he was always there with us. Uh, we were fortunate to go visit him in hospital and um, also just meeting with the family. It was an awesome time to meet with him and to listen to all their stories. We are grateful for Jimmy. Jimmy was a wonderful guy to know. Even though um, for me he will always stand out as somebody who was always available, always available to pray with and to spend time with. And to the family, I just, my deepest condolences and um, you guys will always be on my heart. Jimmy was a true brother in Christ and we remember him dearly. He was a regular at our men's brekkies and always present at church. He'd come early, he'd sit and watch the band rehearsal, and he'd just sit there waiting for the coffee to brew, and he'd watch us with great interest, every time. Jimmy was a true scholar and a gentleman, old school, like you don't find often today. In his quiet way, he would add value to any company, often asking tough questions, or making telling remarks to discussions, he wasn't one of many words, but he was always wise and yet inquisitive. <laughs> Mostly I loved pulling his leg about the Kez and St. John's rivalry he and I had enjoyed, even though we were about 20 years apart at the respective schools. After one of my remarks, he would always just laugh quietly, never a rebuttal. We also shared a keen interest in the mastery of the English language. I always let him win, after all. It was Jimmy, and anyway, it's the sort of thing a cares boy would do. Jimmy, we love you, we miss you, and we'll always remember you fondly, and until we meet again, rest in his peace. Amen. And to all Jimmy's friends and family, who are in our thoughts and our prayers at this difficult time. Lots and lots of love from JJ. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I'm Jimmy died just a few months before his 84th birthday. I think it's fair to say that he had a good innings. He fought the good fight, he ran the race, and he kept the faith to the end. Death came for Jimmy, <clears throat> as it must for all of us. The Bible calls death the final enemy. Death waits for no man or woman. And Psalm 139 verse 16 reminds us that all the days ordained for us are written in God's book. And they were written for all of us before one of them even came to be. Now, generally, when we speak of death, we have in mind loss. Death is seen as a taking away, a diminishing, an ending. The person we once knew is gone, is no longer with us. And the emotions we experience when someone dies stem mostly from our sense of having lost someone near and dear and meaningful to us. But the Bible and the Christian way is often so counterintuitive. 
Listen to this verse. It comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. The Apostle Paul says emphatically, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To die is gain. That's a kind of a weird way to talk about and to think about death. Gain means something is acquired. Something is taken possession of. Gain means to increase, to get an advantage. Gain is a good thing, unless it's weight that you're gaining. But to speak of gain when someone dies is a rather unusual thing to do. The spiritual reality, however, is that in Christ, death is not the end and it is not a loss. On the contrary, it is the beginning. And in spiritual terms, it is a blessing. So with that in mind, I want to briefly look at three blessings that believers gain when they die. The first one is that we gain a better body. In this present body of ours, we are subject to all the sorrows, tears, and disappointments of life. We are subject to the aging process. Anyone over the age of 40 can attest to that. The bones start to ache and the joints start to complain. We get injuries more easily and they take longer to heal. These bodies of ours are frail. They break. Sickness, frailty, and finally death are the inevitable end of this house made of the dust of the earth. But in death and the resurrection, we gain a better body, one that can never grow old, never know disease, never suffer pain, never break, and never die. We gain a better body. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 tells us that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. The second blessing we get is that we gain a better life. We gain eternal life. All of us live in this world of a shrinking family circle. Parents die, uncles and aunts, grandparents, they all grow older and die. But that doesn't happen in heaven. In heaven, the circle is unbroken forever and ever. There is no aging process. There is no death. When a member of the Salvation Army dies, they say that he or she has been promoted to glory. Promoted to glory. For the believer, death is merely the doorway from this limited life into the fullness of eternal life. It's a promotion and it's a step up. The third blessing we get is that we gain a better home. No matter how beautiful or elaborate your home may be in this world, it is nothing compared with the home that God has prepared for us. In John chapter 14, Jesus tells us that in the Father's house there is plenty of room and that Jesus has prepared a place there for us and that we will be there with Him. I'm a keen camper. I love sleeping under the stars. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and for many people the only stars they want to see when they're on holiday are the three or four or five stars on the door of the hotel. When you're camping, your tent provides protection against the elements. It keeps you dry, well, most of the time, and relatively warm. But after two weeks of camping, it really is nice to go home again. Home to the familiar, the comfort, the convenience, the ease, and the security that a home provides. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul refers to this body as the earthly tent. A tent, let's face it, is a fairly flimsy thing and it is temporary. Jimmy has left his earthly tent behind and he has gone home. So friends, today we remember Jimmy. We celebrate his life and although we mourn our loss, we rejoice that he is with his Lord. And we remind ourselves that Jimmy has gained a better body, one that is free of the burdens and the aches and the pains of old age and the cancer that he had in his last days. Jimmy has gained a better life, an eternal life that will be spent in God's presence. Jimmy has been promoted to glory. And Jimmy has gained a better home, a home in his father's house prepared specially for him by Jesus. He is now in the comfort and the warmth and the security of his father in heaven who loves him dearly. And it is precisely because of these gains which all believers acquire upon death that Paul is able to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? And I'm sure that is Jimmy's joyful refrain today. 
Death may be the final enemy, but it is not a victorious enemy because Christ has conquered death. And so, like Paul, we are able to say with full confidence and complete assurance, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And we know that that is Jimmy's reality in and through Christ. He has gained. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jimmy's life. Lord, thank you for the 83, nearly 84 years you gave him on this earth. Thank you for all the things that he experienced, for the lives that he touched. And Lord, we just grieve his passing. We remember him. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with the family at this time as they remember a father, a husband, a granddad, a friend. And so, Father, yeah, we just really thank you that we can know that he has gained these things, these blessings that he has gained in death because of you and because of your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm now going to do the commendation or read the commendation as we commend Jimmy's soul to the Lord. Let us bow our heads. And now, O Lord, to you we commend the soul of Jimmy Dewar, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As many of you know, the Lord's Prayer uh, was Jimmy's favorite. He just loved it. And uh, we jokingly say that he, he often lamented that we did not say it enough in church. So today, in honor of Jimmy and in his memory, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to close this memorial service now with a benediction. Thank you so much for joining us today and for your solidarity with the family as they remember and celebrate the life of Jimmy Dewar. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace.